before. <laughs> So how has your, your WNBA experience been so far? I have been uh, leading the WNBA for almost a year now, and it's been great. You know, it's, I never thought I wanted to be the president of anything, and um, I find myself in that role. But what really defines it for me is um, the 132 women who play this game, who are amazing athletes, um, incredible citizens, um, very stylish, uh, very playful, very committed. Um, they have this wonderful balance of um, coming in every day and knowing their position and doing their best, but also really um, understanding their role in team and getting a team to victory. Um, so I'm really loving it. You know, it's, uh, I had not been to a WNBA game before I joined, and there was a little tiny part of me that said, oh my gosh, what happens if I get to a game and I don't like it? And I went to my first game and I loved it. You know, I had no idea that the women's game was as um, fast, as competitive, um, and as engaging. Um, so, you know, as a brand person, good brands are built on great products. And so I feel really um, honored uh, and humbled and blessed to be running uh, this organization. The, the, you've had the opportunity to read through the materials and you understand a little bit about what the genesis of this whole mm -hmm. project was. What, what the young lady stated was uh, there's nothing good about growing up to be a black woman. What do you think about that, Sarah? Well, when you hear young girls say there's nothing good about growing up um, as a black woman or to be a black woman, first it just sort of makes your heart sink. Um, because I would, you know, I, I never want anyone to feel um, that the future is not bright ahead of them. So to all the young girls who've said that, um, I hope to change their mind uh, and let them know that it's actually fabulous to grow up and be a black woman. Um, I spend a lot of um, time, or as much time as I can, um, meeting with young girls and talking with young girls um, because I think it's important or it helps to see someone who has done something that you want to do or something that you never imagined you could do, or something you never thought about doing. So um, to all the women of my age, <laughs> I would encourage them to sort of get out into the community and interact with um, young girls. And it's also one of the things that I love most about the WNBA. Um, uh, we have all different kinds of women uh, in this league, whether as players or coaches or owners or physical therapists, um, but it's an organization um, with a lot of really talented women. And I'm very proud that these women are role models um, and take their role as role models very seriously. So um, I think all of us need to do all we can to show the young girls who've made that statement that there's a very different path ahead than the one that they may currently see. And could you explain a little bit on, on what some of these players do in terms of outreach? Oh, they're amazing. So Tamika Catchings, who is our MVP, uh, or was our MVP in 2001, has a foundation um, where she does a lot of work and runs camps and communities to uh, ensure that young kids are physically and emotionally um, stable. Um, there are others who are very committed to ending domestic violence. There are others who care about the environment and really want to make a difference in the environment. There are others who um, 
want to make sure that the world is a safe place for animals. So what's so great is these women are sort of a microcosm of our society. It, it doesn't really matter what your passion is beyond yourself. It just matters that you have a passion beyond yourself and that you take action on that. And so I sit every day and marvel that these women are elite athletes, professional athletes competing at the highest level, yet they still find time to sign an autograph, to do a fit clinic, um, to create a foundation uh, in their community. So I think it's, um, it's just really amazing. It is. It is. Um, the other aspect of, of the dialogue with the young woman was the impact of media, more specifically the negative impact mm -hmm. of media. What are your thoughts? Do you believe that the media has an impact on uh, self-esteem in the world? I think the most important thing, if, if young girls feel like the media has a negative impact on their self-image, then it does. So we have to get beyond whether the media is doing that intentionally or not, and all of us have to get on board of um, sort of making a distinction between our desired um, intent and um, perhaps unintentional impact. So um, what I would take away from that is um, I think there are, are incredible opportunities for the media to do an even better job shining a light on um, the wonderful things that young African-American girls are doing, that older African-American women are doing. Um, so I think it is, um, you know, I prefer not to deal in um, blaming the media, but actually inviting the media to do um, a much better job of showing um, women and girls um, in all of the glory, you know? And I think that um, the great thing is you don't have to create the stories. The stories are there, they exist, so it's a matter of shining a light on them. This is not something that needs to be started from scratch. It's just about back to the choices that people make every day and how do we want to, who do we want to feature, how do we want to feature them, and how much time do we want to give them. This is hard for me not to jump up and applaud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very, very well said. Um, very well said. Thank you. But the last question is, what 